Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I am your host, Christopher Brown, and we are continuing municipal series on the Cross Border Interviews, where we sit down with local elected leaders from across this great country to talk about themselves, their community, and of course, that very important question, where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Today, we are heading to my home province of Alberta to Clearwater County to sit down with Division 7 Councillor Michelle Swanson. Councillor Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So, Michelle, let's get the question that I just started, but you're gonna—I'm gonna ask it again just to set you up here. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from, Michelle? Um, actually, I have to go all the way back to when I was younger. I was part of the 4-H program for many, many years, and I feel that that particular program does a lot to um, teach kids servant leadership. And so being as part of that for 11 years, I was fortunate to go to 4-H camps and travel, travel the province and also was awarded selections. And in high school, um, you know, of course you got that old students union. Um, and so I was selected to do a, a leadership camp. And so anyway, so that's kind of the bare bones of how I, uh, I guess I'll say I'm part of this. And so that's where my, my roots come from, so. But you don't go overnight from being the 4-H person to a county councillor. Um, what does the what does politics mean to you? When you were young, was it discussed at the dinner table? Was municipal politics? Because everyone says they talked about what was happening in Ottawa or Edmonton. But really, as long as the garbage was picked up and their water was turned on, that's all that mattered really at the municipal level. Was politics discussed at the dinner table around your household? Yeah, I, as a you know, growing up in the country, growing up on the farm, right? You you talk about everything. It's the birds, the bees, and the politics. So <laughs> can I so, use yeah. that from now on? That's the best line I've ever heard. <laughs> so you know, I mean, in in that sense, I'm I'm happy that you know that that was something that was never a, a taboo project or topic. The other thing is too is my husband's family, you know, very much you know turned on the news that. CBC or CTV, we're always discussing the latest farming as well. So, you know, you're deeply grounded in what those day-to-day -day things and how politics affects you. Um, again, I have to say, I, I, I moved, we moved around the province and in 2004, we moved to Clearwater County. And um, for me, um, getting involved as a uh, member at large on different committees that that was a big step and then yeah I had a fellow that phoned me every month for three years asking me to run and so what three same. years was this because 2004 so the the next election would have been 2007 if I'm not mistaken so were they calling you like at, in 2004 saying okay hey, Michelle you got to run now <laughs> No, new new to the community. So at that point in time, so no, it was actually um, 2014. So during that break, um, I I've been home caring for my my mother in law come and lived with us. So it was home care. So I had an interest, but it just wasn't something that I could swing as far as a schedule. And then yes, yeah, so it was every every month. It's like, hey Michelle, what are you doing? Are you gonna run? And anyway, bless his heart. So what happened in 2017 then? Because after three years of that guy wearing you down, you finally said, okay, enough's enough. Michelle is going to be on the ballot for Division 7. Was there an issue that sparked your interest or was it a overarching uh, a desire that people are asking me? People are asking me to put my name forward, so I'm going to do it because I'm not going to be alone in this endeavor. In... I do a lot of research and I do, and it's not just necessarily the local, like I'm always considering myself a lifelong learner, uh, look through things through rose colored glasses. Maybe that's my downfall. I don't know. I always believe there's a, a, you know, that strike of sunshine somewhere. And in regards to an issue, you know, the local county had been um, dealing with an administrative building process project um, the community felt it was not necessarily communicated to them. There was a, a, you know, a lot of angst. So I participated in, you know, getting to know that, um, you know, where that process had broken down, how, you know, there was an, an open house. They weren't expecting that many people come, but um, it basically 
uh, forced the council to put that project on a, on the shelf. Um, at the time too, internet was very important. I, you know, we wanted to somehow influence the county to either put it in fiber optics, more, more towers, something. Um, and of course, those were great times. Um, you know, the, the province was growing and building and it, it just felt like the county was slowing down. Little did I know that's usually what the process is. <laughs> so, um, but at the end of the day, it was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to, and my husband said, you're either in all, all in or you're not. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Um, the fellow that I, that I beat the incumbent, um, he's, you know, he's a, a great community leader in, in, in the time that he served. And, um, you know, it's just time for a change. And I think that's what, what people had wanted at that time. You, you said you were on boards and a lot of people who go sit on boards, especially in uh, counties. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I come from Big Lakes County before I moved down here to uh, uh, Calgary. And I can tell you that um, county politics is a unique beast because there's not a lot of people who put their name forward for those boards. So the, 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 the pool of talent that goes into that is very slim. And I don't say that not everyone's not equipped to do it. But usually you get your chops there, volunteering and learning about the county issues. And then you go into elected politics, which I tried to and was not successful like you were. But I want to know, you seem to be someone who had the pulse of their community. You seem to know what the issues that were facing the community. But during that first election in 2017, were there issues that were coming up that you weren't prepared for? Not not prepared for to answer, but thinking to yourself, oh, I didn't think that this was going to be an issue, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be healthcare. Were there issues that were coming up at the doors that you went, I'm glad someone's talking about this because if elected, I'll be able to address it. Yeah, my, of course, let's go back to technology, right? Not a lot of counties were doing the live streams for meetings. Yeah. And of course we hold day meetings. So for somebody to get off work in order to, you know, attend and get informed about what's happening, it took that time off. So that was one of my campaign, pro uh, you know, measures at that time was I would like to move the county forward on that platform. Um, at least you have an opportunity to look at something in the background. So that was one. Um, the other thing for me is the communication, like what more could we, the county didn't want to do too much on, you know, the social media platforms, which I understand. But if you're going to engage millennials, which my children are, um, Man, that that's where they're getting their news. They're not interested in, and they want quick sound bites. They don't, or a little video. They don't want to read the newspaper. They don't want to, and unfortunately, that's. I love reading, but I mean, for them, it's it's and get to the point. They they have you got thirty seconds to get to what you need to do. So going back to two thousand seventeen, the lovely provincial government decided that we are going to mandate ICFs, intercollaborative frameworks. And our county had to do 13. So it was a big undertaking um, in that instance. And, you know, that that was some of it easy or, you know, your your border neighbors like Brazo County, Lacombe County, you know, the county county were easier. The village to county, which we have the village of Caroline in and the town of Rocky Mountain House, those were a little bit more, I'll just say, sometimes contentious. We were undergoing different agreement um, modernizations. And so that was all part of it. But like anything, um, it's, I'll say I'm a, I'm a second term. So for yeah. me, from 17 to now, um, even personalities around the table, I can oh. really um, it bring up different ideas that, um, you know, we with the council as a whole, that we focus on through our strategic plan. So I want to take us back to October of 2017 here for a second, because this <laughs> is the question I always love, because I always get a feel about what type of counselor the person is or what type of mayor or reeve you are. Going into that ballot box, going into that ballot box and seeing your name on that ballot 
is the most surreal experience that I've ever had in my life in the three times I've ran for elected. Uh, and I still get chills thinking about that first time I saw my name on the ballot. For you, what was that experience like going into that ballot box, seeing your name, and then putting an X or check mark beside your name and knowing at least after all this, you've gotten one vote? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> It is, I have, I have a good support system. You know, my husband worked, you know, part-time up North. He worked in the oil sands, you know, half, half away half the year, basically. And so I had, you know, the rally of the neighbors. I had some neighbors that were, you know, helping me out going around campaigning and, you know, helping me, especially right up until, you know, the day of the election came, shell, let's go. We're going to go hit some more houses. And, you know, I have to really thank the, you know, I really appreciated that time that those people were vocally supportive of me. Um, again, it's a different network. It's a different, you know, people who I was connecting to um, maybe not have been in the same way that the incumbent had, um, I have a very diverse background, right, from farming, you know, and I've, like I say, I've been all over the province. So yeah. I, I understand how people are, can get very siloed in their thinking. And it's to say, we got to, if we want to grow, we want to do something different. Um, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm open. I want to listen to your ideas and I have ideas of my own. So. Okay. You've, you've opened a little bit of a Pandora's box that I want to play in here for a second. I've heard you say that oh, before. I, I love it though. <laughs> I love, I love when people like, because I, I have a plan when I go in interviews of how things are going to be. And when someone says something that I'm like, I need to ask that, but I'm going to ask it in a weird way that it's going to either sound really rude or really bad. Okay. You get elected to council. You are a unique voice in yourself. You are now a new term counselor in 2017 when you're first elected. Mm -hmm. What challenges do you face as a uh, you uh, as a first term counselor who, like yourself, and I kind of I'm kind of playing off of what, how I kind of found out that you were a counselor, want to communicate to your people, but you have potentially some people saying we haven't done it that way, so we don't want to do it that way. How do you move things forward to communicate to your residents, to your constituents, to your neighbors, but at the same time, understanding that government doesn't move as fast as you want it to be? Have you learned the ability to navigate local government as a first term, well, now a second term counselor? And what advice would you give to people out there who are first term counselors saying, I'm like Michelle, I want to change things. I want to do things differently. But the way that the the, the system is structured, it's not going to happen overnight. What advice would you give to the people? And how did you do it? Because I see Clearwater County, like they have Twitter, they have Facebook, and they are advertising left, right and center. And I'm kind of thinking, did Michelle have a role to play in that? I think so. Well, it's like anything, you know, there's that above the line, below the line in any, in this, especially in municipal politics. And that was something I had to learn really quick is where my role was. That was above the line is to direct it's, you know, and get that agreement on council of where the direction you want to go. Um, and then, and that's my first thing is, is to learn what administration is, learn, learn the org chart, who's in charge of what. And then go through that CAO and say, you know, um, as a council, we we want to work on communications. Let's work, let's throw some money more at whatever those platforms are. Increase newsletter, increase newspaper, whatever that would be, radio ads. So with that, um, I think it's critical that that relationship to the CAO to the rest of administration is there has to be. Um, a level of trust and that they're doing their best. And I trust the CEO to do, to do that direction or to do that, um, I shouldn't say to do, but to offer that level of, of leadership towards his administration. And did that come easy I'm, though? Did that come easy? Because 
as a new term counselor, like when anyone gets elected, I always often hear these stories off the record that I got elected. I was going to go in there. I was going to change the system and I was going to do it overnight and everyone's going to be happy. And then you get elected, you go to that first council and you go, wait a second, what's going on here? You mean I have to make a motion and a motion and then three motions later, then we can get that done. Oh, Okay. And, it, and it's to trust that the administration's brought forward all that information that you may have missed. And I think that's where, when I wanted the live stream, because I did sit for almost a year before that in, in the council gallery, listening in person, right? You know, to try, and I understood what the meeting was about. And I got to know some of those administrative people through, through planning or public works or ag services, you know, and oh, hello, Michelle, you know, kind of thing in the on the side during a break or whatever. And I got to learn through the committee work as well, those making those relationships. And I think that's critical because they want administration or, or the CEO wants to do a direct council, go where council directs, but in a way that creates a success through the organization as well. And it's like anything, if you've got a level of trust, you everything works smoothly. But the minute there's a, a hmm, something's missing here or a level of distress, it causes that ripple that nobody wants to talk to you. And again, they, they stay at the far corner of the room as well. So I will say for myself, I had relationships before I was a counselor with some of the administration. So I understood those roles and I like where things were going. And I, and I knew how to talk to my CEO or request through an email and let's, let's, I need wherever we needed that extra information. So quick, quick, I know I didn't ask quick, your question. Maybe no, you I, did, you but I have a quick question on top of this because county pol local government is the worst watched politics out there people watch question period they watch oral questions but unlike you who goes and sits in that room for a year listening to uh, county politics firsthand why do you think that is and i'm not trying to be rude here i'm not trying to be like uh, like deter from our conversation but I'm, I'm trying to find out why the heck municipal politics is such a nonchalant politics because you guys are the front lines of our government you are the ones who if the water doesn't turn on i'm not calling my mla or my mp i'm calling my counselor if my health care isn't fixed i should be calling my mla but i'm calling my counselor so why do you think municipal politics in your opinion isn't that well received when it comes to watching council meetings because i do it on a regular basis and i can tell you there's some interesting meetings sometimes <laughs> we watch some of ours quite obviously what <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there i will say for me to go in now let's let's reverse back to that you know that fellow that's called me every month for three you know for three years i wanted to know what i was getting into i wanted okay. to understand part of the process right and there is a statistic out there. If you want a woman to get into politics, you have to ask her a minimum of eight times. There, I went to a UFC um, evening and I, I found that very fascinating. And I thought, yep, yeah, I can see women who have that hesitancy. You know, I, you know, you asked me once, you asked me twice and it's like, ah, whatever. But then when you start asking me, repeat, repeat. And so I got asked, 12 times, 36 times, basically from that fellow calling me every year, you know, every month for three years, then I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I think I can do this. And again, it's doing your homework. It's understanding two sides. I've always been one where you're trying to balance. Okay. This is my perception, but let's take off my silo and my binders off and see what else I'm missing. Or maybe there, there's something more out there that and, and it's to explain it. And this is the hard part. People think municipal politics is complicated and it really isn't. And if you want to twist every word or have that seeded doubt on everything that you hear, well, then you'll never be satisfied. And I'm, and I don't know if it's the air of mistrust that we're seeing lately, 
But when it started off, it was pretty good. And it seems that through COVID, through everything, it's just kind of died down to the point where it's like, I almost feel like I have to email everything versus talk to somebody. <laughs> Hence why we do not edit any of our interviews because we don't want to take anyone out of context. Um, I want to ask a very poignant question. Do you think you're a better counselor because of that year that you spent going to those council meetings before being elected? Absolutely. I learned really? a lot. I learned about the personalities around the table. I learned about the personalities that were presenting to the people at the table. I learned about, um, I mean, I got offered the, the municipal development plan, you know, as part of, because I was on the M municipal planning commission. So, you know, nice. I had some stuff. Um, just it's, yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. It's, it's fantastic. And then to take, to go and have coffee with my friends or wherever else and say, no, this is what happened at the county today. And they're like, well, how did you know? And I'm like, because I went. I sat there for um, the three hour meeting sometimes. <laughs> it is. Um, it, you know, do I understand fully? You know, did I understand fully a, a, of a budget? No, nope. I, I think that is learning what the services that the county had offered. That, that was hard for me to learn all that, even you know, even through my first couple of years as a, as a counselor, a new counselor, you know, you got to learn those things. Um, what works, what doesn't, what are we going to cut out? What's, you know, what are we going to enhance? What are the, you know, where, where's the need? And unfortunately, provincial politics forces us, the downloading and service cuts and how we want to, uh, you know, continue with the services around here. So. Yeah. Michelle, I feel like I could continue this conversation for like an hour, but we have other segments that I want to turn to because I, I am cautious of time here. Um, I want to talk about the County of Clearwater. And if you've listened to the show, you know what I'm about to say. I'm going to preface this question by saying this because we get a lot of emails and for some okay. reason they all like to have explicit uh, words that I need to mute from time to time. But... Mm -hmm. I want to know, in your opinion, and this is the opinion of the counselor talking to the host of the cross-border interviews, this is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is her opinion. Michelle, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the Clearwater County? It's Clearwater County today. Today, it is right now, we just finished the public hearing for our municipal development plan. Um, it's been a contentious issue. It was started back three years ago um, with the past council. Uh, of course, COVID through, you know, can't get the public. The, we did Zoom, but that wasn't satisfying some. No, that's fine. Um, we're trying to grow um, some business, grow some more people to population. Like any county in this province, we are facing aging population. And how do you track young? How do you track business, et cetera? I also feel that we need to maybe shift a different business model or work shift model, maybe embrace a little bit more uh, job sharing or remote work on certain things. Um, I think we need to do that shift through a municipality as well. Um, some are not going to be as easy like public works. That's, that's what it is, what it is. But I think our municipal development plan to me right now is our biggest issue. I wanna get over that hurdle. And we're, it's planning, um, land use planning, and everybody is very apprehensive about that right now. Okay. Now let's play in that sandbox. How do we fix it? How do we get to a, a solution that not, because you've been in politics now for, let's say, five years, you know, not everyone is going to be happy with every single decision, every single motion, every single policy, every single bylaw that gets put forward. How do you how do you ensure that your county doesn't go backwards when looking at this municipal plan? Because you're not the first person to talk about this. You're not the last person I'm assuming I'll be talking about this with. How does how do you see your role in helping get this done? Because at the end of the day, unless it gets done, you're spending money hand over fist, writing reports and writing reports and nothing ever gets done. How do you see yourself playing a role in getting this done and present it to your residents in a way that 
the majority will be happy. It's one of those things that because of my ag background, we, my husband and I farmed on the east side of the province and understanding we were the youngest farmers there, farming, renting from bachelors. Agriculture right now is, is the loudest right now here. And they're worried about, you know, more people moving into the area. Um, there is, a, they paint the brush of the subdivisions of every, all their subdivision dogs are chasing my cows or chasing my chickens or, you know, that kind of thing where I'm of the opinion that we can put strategically put more subdivision. And we've right now the contentious issue issue in her MDP is one extra subdivision uh, on a quarter section. And we've limited that to 20 a year for the next three years, which we have um, a huge municipality of which 80% of our municipality is crown land. So understanding that I have to balance the opportunity of tourism in that green space. Which we'll talk to, about a little bit later. <laughs> yes. And then to the opportunity, you know, of all the deeded land and where that happens. But doesn't the, years, doesn't the resident have the right to be apprehensive about that? Doesn't the doesn't the resident have the ability to say, okay, while it's great, while mm -hmm. I don't want it in my backyard, I want I understand that you need we need to build to grow our county, but at the same time, let's be honest. Like if the dogs are chasing my cows, I'm going to be very upset with the this new subdivision because I want my farmland, my far livestock, to feel safe and be safe. Absolutely. And we're not arguing, we're not telling every county, every, you know, quarter owner, you have to do this. This isn't. And to me, it boils down to talking to your neighbor, becoming a community. Um, I have six subdivisions right across from me. They're my 911. They also are the volunteers in my community, the volunteers that are the hockey coaches for my kids games. They are people that are working in the businesses in town that keep those services going. I need, we need a variety of housing types and opportunities to draw different kinds of people here. There is the retiree farmer whose children aren't coming back. They'd love to subdivide their acre or, you know, subdivide the homestead off and sell the balance of their quarter to the neighboring farmer who would like to farm it. There's many ways that people want to do this. Also included in that is we have a fractionation um, in our MDP. And that's the other thing that it's, some farmers are doing it because it's either a railroad or a river or a stream. And, and I get it, but um, we got a very desirable county that people want to come to. Um, I live, I visited this county back in 1999 and I was just like, oh, this is pretty neat. <laughs> Told my husband we're retired next to the mountains. I didn't know when that was going to happen, but five years later, whoo, there we come. Um, I think I, I understand that sentiment. I don't want that, but there are not everybody is going to be like that. We have great neighbors. We need to communicate. We got to get back to that. Hey, come over for a coffee or let's, I only have to talk to my neighbor once a year or twice a year or every day, whatever that is. We we've grown into some silos, unfortunately. I want to talk about silos because you are elected to represent division seven of the County. Now mm -hmm. you are elected by the people of division seven. They want you to go and advocate for their division, but as a counselor, you can't do that. You have to advocate for the county as a whole. You have to look at every individual issue as a county issue, not a division issue. Now, how do you balance that? Because you want the best for the people who've elected you, but you also have to remember that the county has to benefit from all the decisions and not just your, the people who've elected you. I agree. And some of these divisions are big. And my, you know, I have a very, um, the more south to my division, that's where the higher density of my residents are to the north, uh, very sparse. I mean, I got a finger that goes up behind Alder Flats. There's only four residents, five residents up there. It's hard to communicate to those particular people. Um, and I, when I'm making my decisions, it's, it's yes, 
council, it's the county as a whole, are we benefiting it? Um, understanding that there's certain roads and certain other divisions that, hey, I get it, that needs to be done. Um, or we have a program for community halls and, you know, throughout, you know, maybe one community hall needs uh, a bit more on capital to replace the roof or that kind of thing. So even though I have one in my division as well, or a couple in my division, it, it's a matter of balance. And at the end of the day, if the county is going forward, um, it, it's much easier. Right now we have a little bit of a you probably know we're going to get into the tourism stuff. So I'll wait. We'll talk about Nordic in a minute. <laughs> we we certainly will. But I want to ask the final question in this segment before we do turn to tourism. Now, you've talked about a few issues that are facing the county today. Economic development, aging population, uh, the MPI, M, uh, the municipal planning plan. Sorry. Um, but if I go talk to the people of your county and I go ask them the exact same question, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing them? Now, they're going to give me a range of issues. They may agree with you on some of these. They may say we need to diversify. We need some aging. We need to address the aging population, people moving, retention. But they'll, they, might, they might also give me some micro issues. I need my, my road uh, paved. I need potholes fixed. I need a new playground in my area. How do you take all those issues, bring them to council, and advocate for them, but then at the same time, then go to a budget session, which we are currently in for a lot of municipalities. I'm not sure where the county stands right now in their budget, but then look at the budget and say, okay, I want to fix John's pothole, but right now Sarah's pothole two counties over is a lot worse. So we're going to have to fix Sarah. And then I'm, I'm going to have to go back to John and say, John, not this year. How do you look at the overarching picture and then decide what issues have to be important that year? Because everyone believes their issue is the most important. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree. And it's in the Have most you found the balance, issue, though? Have you found the balance? Again, it's it's about those those conversations. It's under explaining those conversations in, in that. To me, that's what we have to have to connect the dots with and you know our farmers right now are feeling threatened um and, and i understand that um but they're one segment we have very blessed with a lot of oil and gas and you know in in that instance we have you know other projects that are we have an amalgamation study with that's happening with the village of caroline um it feels like the county is spread thin, but as long as their road is being graveled and graded, if snow plowed, and that their taxes stay low, I don't hear a lot per se, other than for, I'll just say from the majority. Um, I try and put myself out there through, you know, every, anybody can access my cell phone, my my email, whatever else. I do get the odd one, which is you, great. You I'm county counselors are very big on giving out cell phones. Like I went to the Clearwater uh, website and I went, why are these people's cell phones on this website? But okay, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of being accountable. And to me, that's it's fair and, and I'm okay with that. But it's also being part of your community. I feel I feel like I'm a community builder. It doesn't matter if I'm going to uh, the Lessieville Antique Days out east or I'm going out to something out at Nordig or I'm going down south to someplace close to the James River Bridge, um, you know, any events. And as we get out in amongst the community, that's to me is is critical. Um, seeing people on their at their best and at their events that they're most comfortable with. So that's. I, I will I'll say my biggest, uh, the biggest thing for our region that really helped me connect with a lot of people was being part of the 2019 Masters Games, Alberta Masters Games. That was an inaugural event. We started the 35 and over and, you know, that was two years in the making. And that to me really was critical for our area because of sport recreation on a non-professional level. So and getting out to meet those people, getting, you know, we, we formed a committee. We, you know, there's 600 volunteers. We had a thousand participants, you know, it was, it was 
unbelievable the the buy-in that we got from the community both the town and the and the county so with that so i okay. i was so good that didn't happen during covid <laughs> a lot of things i'm happy didn't happen during covid but some things did so we have to deal with it i want to turn to segment three because i'm cautious of time here and i want to talk about my favorite subject because a i love it as a tourist i like visiting communities i like talking tourism 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 and i like to hear from these councillors mayors reeves about where their tourist money or ideas are in their area so michelle as a tourist who has listeners from as a show who has listeners from across canada what are some of the tourist hidden gems in your county that you need people to see if they ever visit when they visit i should say Mm -hmm. Well, we mentioned, I kind of mentioned before, and that's Nordig. Nordig, and then you go west and Abraham Lake. Uh, we have a wonderful tourism group called Explore Nordig. You can go there and there's a conglomerate of businesses that will take you out through either uh, guided hikes, and et cetera, et cetera. Go see the bubbles right now or go in, you know, in the summertime. That's, to me, key. The, the Alberta, well, it used to be AEP. They've renamed themselves that ministry, but you know they they put out some better pullouts for people to you know take part in that kind of thing. So anything out west, of course, it, it's it's beautiful. Um, I would say I'm very happy that we have the World Professional Check Wagons that come here in August. Uh, it's an event that's a huge draw. It's wonderful. It's um, you know with that, and if you're a beer drinker, I invite you to come here and I will take you to rival trade and we will go for a beer because um, that has been exciting. I think that's, um, I very much appreciate the craft beer industry. I like their vibe. I think that is key to any tourism is the vibe in the, in that area. And that keeps people from coming back. So that's, that's great. I was just at a two day tourism conference, the tourism industry association. And you were up in Edmonton. In Edmonton. It was fantastic. Um, Learned a lot. <laughs> I can imagine tourism is an untapped market that we, a lot of municipalities need to tap into. And I'm hoping that they do it because when I visit your community, I can explore these tourism destinations before they become hot and on the map so I can be the say I was there first. I, I got the first tour. Um, I want to ask this though, after a stressful day, after a long day, and I'm as you've listened to the show, you know, the question, where do you go to decompress in the County? Is there a spot? Is there a local watering hole? Is there a park? Is there a drive that you do? And, and I say this to all the counselors, you can't say your house. You have to say somewhere outside your house. Where do you go to decompress? Well, I kind of touched on all three of them in my in my little jams, right? I love that drive to Nordic. Um, my husband likes to go and go and hikes, and we call it forest bathing, right? We go and it's it's a way to decompress. Um, yeah, watering hole is rival. Like, I mean, it's a great place to go. Um, just they got a great patio in the summertime, that kind of thing. My, I'm blessed because when we moved to this area, I bought my forever quarter. And I have a panorama view of the mountains. We built a big gazebo and that's literally, I grab my bottle of wine, I go down to my gazebo, start the fire and my cell doesn't work really great right down there. So, you know, it's not my house, but it's, it's on my property. I have no need to really to go anywhere. See, I, I love where I live. Jealous, jealous. Thy name is Christopher Brown. Um, Michelle, <laughs> My very last question to you is this. Take as long as you want to answer this question as well. What makes Clearwater County such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Hmm. Like I told you before, when I came in 1999, it was one of those places that, and it, it, this has always resonated with me. I've, I've been told that when you go to someplace to va vacation or visit, if it strikes you and you have an opportunity, you'll move back or you'll go back again. So Clearwater County, when we came in 99, it was one of those places that I go, hmm, I, 
it's close to the mountains. My kids are outdoor kids. Um, my husband as well. And I, I could see myself coming here and living in this area. And I think that's the beauty of, of the opportunity. We have the backyard that people would love to access. They don't necessarily, you don't have to own a piece, but you have access to it. And I think when we have 100,000 people random camping here from May to September, you know they want to come and play in our backyard. And it's meeting those people and it's having that welcoming vibe. I'm, I'm a people person. I love to tell her story. My house, when I built it, I had my mother-in-law sweet and God bless her when she left, I turned it into an Airbnb. And I have people that come here from Edmonton and Calgary, Shanghai, uh, Toronto. It's those guests are, are golden to me because how, how about a they, podcast host from Calgary? Would you like a visitor from Calgary? Because you're painting an amazing photo right now. Uh, it's, it's part of that thing where people want to come, especially from the, uh, from a city that want a bit of the country that's not intimidating to them. And I have chickens out in the summertime. I do meet birds. I have cats that always have kittens and, we, my dad brings this Percheron horses with his or Clyde horses with their colts. People get that interaction with nature and a very, in a way that it, I think people have been disconnected for so long. And I was telling my kids that you better smile because you're a tourist attraction, wherever you are, you, you're the vibe that you want reflected back to you you have to reflect first sometimes and it's hard. Um, and I love this place. It's fantastic. I love my neighbors. I would love to see it grow. I, it saddens me that, you know, businesses have closed. Um, you know, it's been hard. It's been a struggle the last three, two, three years. Um, Nordig is set to grow. We have a commercial core that's ready to sail. I'm, I'm all excited. If I wasn't sitting here, I would be out there, you know, and, and, that again, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful area. And I hope people, when you're driving through, of course, it's the Cowboy Trail, and, you know, pull the, make those pull stops and, and take it in. The only time I've ever been through your county, I drove through it because I said, what's the Cowboy Trail? And we drove up it and I went, okay, I need to stop into some of these communities next time I come through. So I will be out in Clearwater County later this year because I want to a meet yourself because you seem like such an amazing person. You're uh, you, you are a great person, and the county is lucky to have you on its council. But you have painted a picture that is so welcoming that I want to go see it firsthand and experience it firsthand. So thank you so much for doing this, Michelle. It's been an honor to sit down over the last forty five minutes and talk to you about yourself. And your county. It's greatly appreciated. Can't wait. I hope you have a week. <laughs> awesome. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy, and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, this being the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. We'll be back tomorrow with another great interview. Talk to you then.